Welcome, folks. I'm Bob Moffat, Cali College, welding instructor here at Cali College, Arc City, Kansas. Tonight, we have a theme that is special for you. It is, what are we doing in this situation of trying times where we have to teach online and distance learning and you guys are stuck at home? How are you gonna, how are you gonna practice? What resources do you have? Tonight, we have Mr. Mike Beaker, AKA mancubweld.com. And we have a very special guest, my brother, Mr. Hamar Aguilo, out in- What's going on, everybody? Pulled him out. Uh, and we have Mr. Todd Clouser moderating some questions for us so this is all about the fans it's all about you all right guys this is camera guy i'm going to start off we've uh the whole reason we're doing this is because we've been getting a lot of questions through the website about how can i practice i'm a student i'm not in school right now how can i practice from home so uh we're going to kick off with that question we we had the initial question from a guy named will via the website he says i am a student that was sent home for the next two weeks, maybe more due to coronavirus. What can I do at home to practice? I do not have a power source. Anybody want to go first? Because I'm ready. I'm ready to go. I'm, I'm fired up. <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll, go, I'll go ahead and uh, I'll start off with that, man. So especially in these hard times right now when you're under the hood and you're two weeks, three weeks off, whatever the case may be, you get rusty and you get real rusty, right? So especially when you're in love with welding, you eat, sleep, dream welding, and now you can't even strike an arc and plug in machine. You're, it's hard for you to even cope with life now. So, but for something like this, man, I would recommend again, YouTube videos. It's one big one, but not only that, have you a little tick torch, uh, something like this that I have here, right? Maybe a cup, Take torch like this, okay? Um, and just practice walking the cup, man. I mean, just walk the cup little by little, and you can be very sufficient in doing something like that. I will do that for at least maybe, maybe 30, 40 minutes out of the day so I can keep my hands steady every single day, every hour, and uh, you'll be good to go. So, you know, that's definitely uh, something that if you can't be under the hood, at least get your muscle memory down on walking the cup. So that's that's on me. Amber alert. Mike, Amber Bob, alert. you want to jump in there? Not only <laughs> not only did he cut me off, he took my idea. God, no, I'm, kidding. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry about we, uh, that. Amar, we've been doing that. We've been we've been. I've done it actually before. I just never, I never really put it out that it was a formal type thing, but we had a situation where we did some experimenting. Uh, and I've, I've had these in the classroom where I've had people, uh, we did some boot camps uh, a couple years ago and we had some people come in from all over the country. And as an experiment, the people that were uh, not exposed to walking the cup. They weren't proficient at it. Even at lunchtime, we're sitting over there walking Coke cups and stuff. I mean, it just became something we did. And so yeah. we picked up on it and we kind of, we started a control group where somebody was exposed to it, had a TIG torch, piece of filler wire, some dummy coupons, coupons tacked together. And you can weld anywhere, anytime, any position uh, with both hands. And I found that those people really kind of clicked when we got back in here in the in the classroom after after several hours. Uh, and then, I mean, you, see, to me, here's what's happened in my area. Uh, I live up here in the Badlands, and there's a lot of wide open cattle land out here and stuff in some small communities. And everybody thinks that okay, we we'll just take for granted everybody has use and availability of technology. I have some students that their library closed in their town. They don't have access to anything. Uh, they, all they have is a phone, but we're going to teach them. We're going to be okay. Uh, I'm going to support them. I'm going to encourage them and I'm going to show them how to get through this. Uh, there is one more component to all this as far as your hand eye coordination and practicing. I call it just dry welding or I suppose I could pipe off another term, but uh, you add music to it. Add your favorite music to it. You're already bored, you know. Make the best of it. Uh, keep your chin up. We'll get through it, man. Yeah, yeah. That was definitely. Mike, you got anything to chime in there? 
Yeah, it's basically the same thing almost as theirs. I was just looking up earlier. Um, you go on Amazon for twelve dollars and fifty cents and pick up a TIG torch without the consumables. Then another twenty dollars, you could pick up a uh, couple different cups and with your tongues in your back cap. And then you go to a scrap yard. I think what is it? Carbon steel, like in the clearance or re green remnants, is like fifty cents or seventy five cents a, a pound. You go pick out some coupons and uh, just put them together and actually pick out your cups, get used to your cups that you want to use and get your tungsten stick out just right and just basically practice in the bevel and on top and just sit there and practice until like Hamar and uh, Bob saying, get your muscle, get your muscle built up in your wrist. I mean, and make sure you're loosening your wrist when you're moving. Cause when you have tension in your, in your wrist and your arm, you know I mean? It's going to be hard as hard as heck. You want to stay loose. Don't move. Don't exactly. do the chicken wing with your arm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's all in the wrist, guys. Be loose. Always be loose. Don't death grip it. So you're saying and that's for, about yeah, it. That's yeah, all yeah. I got. So you're saying for for um, states that aren't on a, a complete lockdown yet, you know, you still have stores open to some extent. Go out, pick up a TIG torch, get some scrap metal, and you know, if you don't already have one, you can work on it that way. Yeah, yeah I'll, of course. I'll set mine out back. I've had, you know, since I did this, uh, I've had. First of all, before it happened, I reached out to a lot of players. I, I mean, I called Jody, Jonathan, Roy. I mean, I, uh, I can't name all the people I talked to, all the people that are high up that I respect, and I asked them, what would you do in this situation? And everybody was like, uh, we wish you well. Uh, good luck to you. Let me know what you figure out. Yeah, I was confident in what I was going to do as far as putting the dry TIG torch, the just the torch handle in the head. I was confident in that. My problem became, how am I going to work with them? I have to have some kind of feedback and then, and then how would I assess them that the assessment mm -hmm. part of it to be f fair and consistent across the board. Uh, that was my huge concern and still is, but I'm not too awful worried about it. I got a good group and I think they'll support the efforts and we'll make the best of it. I've had some people step up and they are making uh, 3d printed dummy TIG torches. I'm thinking I'm going to put my logo on one of them or something. No, seriously, these are some nice, they're just the replicas. You know, as long as they got the, the right size and weight and everything, a uh, piece of scrap filler metal, and you're good to go. And, and you I can got practice a, anywhere. I got another one. Uh, for, those of, for those of you out there that, that don't have filler metal, you know, this sounds stupid, but, uh, you know, everyone's kind of been going out getting groceries lately. lately. A lot of people have spaghetti on hand. So you don't oh, yeah. you don't have a piece of uh, filler metal. Go in the go in the cupboard. <laughs> grab a piece of spaghetti and start feeding. Get the, you got to do what you got to do, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I suppose you could challenge yourself with the angel hair there you go. and uh, your your coupon. <laughs> yeah. I had somebody comment on yeah. this. Uh, he commented that you, man, you really got to pay attention. You got to have a nice light grip to walk your cup on glass. And I immediately said, man, I'm scared, you know, but we were joking around about, you know, glass. Seriously, uh, I have experienced those super slick surfaces. If I get up about nine o'clock on my way up to the top, I actually That's slightly it. pulled down instead of, you know, if you push it up, I, I go right over the top. You know, if I yeah. pull down slightly, I stay connected, but it's still a extremely subtle uh, touch. It's that touch and feel. So, yeah, okay. uh, the, I think I got I, I got a little trick to that. To that. Add, take, a ahead, little piece of sand, take a little piece of sandpaper and scuff up your cup because your cup actually gets slippery too, like over time of walking the cup. Scuff it up a little bit put, and do what, do what Bob said. <laughs> and mine do what the pull back too. But that helped a lot for me when I was like starting out and learning. I still do it. But uh, sure like does. a little piece of uh, Scotch Brite or like 120 grit uh sandpaper but that's a little trick i learned over the years it helped me a lot yeah so i was gonna implement something as well like i told y'all before walk the cup anything that you see everybody has a barbecue pit okay everybody has something that's round find something that's round whether you're trying to do structural or pipe whatever the case may be find you something like to, that's like a fillet weld find you something like that looks like a butt weld find you something and walk the cup on that literally for 30 right. minutes a day and I promise you, for the first two or three weeks, your muscle memory is going to be so good. So when you actually start welding, 
you're gonna just it's just gonna flow it's gonna be beautiful gonna, and you're not gonna be thinking about it too much man i'm serious it's, it's really correct helpful. but i'm gonna counter that i am gonna counter that not every welds are those cup, man. come on you got a dab you got a dab yeah yeah true you got a dab come on you gotta do that too man you gotta learn it all man so yeah use both hands all, now, yeah it's your opportunity to learn yeah. it all and not every Six. weld you cannot walk the cup off the corner of a fillet weld you got a you got a freehand part of it come on oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Slowly, yeah, yeah. So you, so you do like me, and you, sure. you shake like crazy. You shake all the impurities out of the well pool before you get started, and then you set the cup down. And go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> even, even lay down, even lay down on the floor. Find oh, a tight yeah. spot, three handed, do doing... something. Just pretend, have an imagination, because at the end yeah. of the day, you're gonna get in that tight spot, and it's gonna, it's gonna suck. But if you learn how to d adapt to that by doing these things, practicing beforehand, you're gonna be good, man. You're gonna be great. And you this time right now. And it's quarantine time, and if you're off, man, take the, take advantage of that. Seriously. Okay, I got a I got a loaded question for you guys. Um, I saw this quite a bit. I don't have a, a direct person that that asked the question, but I've been seeing it quite a bit through our uh, DMs and through the website. And that is, how do you see this affecting hiring and jobs once this all passes? <clears throat> Ah uh, man, I'll tell you what. It, a lot of businesses shut down already in some areas, mm -hmm. and it's it's going to be hard hit. You know, they're going to bring back their folks that uh, that they had to lay off. But uh, you know, I don't think anybody's going to just fall flat on their face. It, you know, you're not yeah. going to lose all your your uh, weld skills, regardless of what process. Uh, there's going to be a curve coming back, but uh, you know, I think. You know, it's kind of it's kind of scary to say how long is this going to last? What's it going to do to the economy? Is it going to do to manufacturing? Yeah. Still repairs, still production that has to go on. Uh, transportation of fuel, food, services. Uh, so hard to say, but I don't think anybody's going to super suffer when they come back to work on a weld skill type thing. Oh yeah. Uh, another thing too is over here in Texas, the construction industry is not shut down yet so you, there's still people hiring for welders at the moment construction site here is an essential job so any essential job here has to be open so like construction industry or where, where, regardless of what it is a food market but construction industry is a demand here still in texas so it's really up to you if you're willing to put yourself at risk for this uh covid 19 disease i mean that's that's on you, but the construction industry here is still in demand, so um, nothing's falling yet. So, I, like like Bob said, I don't know when, how long this is going to be. Hopefully, it goes away soon, God willing. But uh, yeah, it was definitely. So I could start my classes online, come down and live with you, and work construction, and just do my night on my I'm joking. Come on. What is a thought? <laughs> I might double. I might double this. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. All right, I got, I got, I got one from a user here. It's from uh, Robert Massaro. Um, he's saying, you know, we've been talking about TIG here quite a bit. What about stick welding? How are you going to practice stick welding at home? Same thing. Pretty much the same way. Same, same way. Other than the fact that you know a stick consumes itself, uh, but pretty much the same way. Hand-eye coordination, comfort, muscle memory. You know, I think everybody can attest that, you know, if you got something in your hand, you're pretty confident. And everybody's had an injury to their favorite hand. A lot of right-handed people, they do nothing with this, you know. Uh, <laughs> and they, you know, they get a cut or something, and now they got to start brushing their teeth with the left hand to stab the eye with a toothbrush, you know. Uh, it, it's, it's weird when you change hands and stuff. I personally, I would take it as an opportunity to practice with the offhand, you know, mm -hmm. wouldn't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Absolutely. Kind of opens kind of opens up your brain a little bit, but uh, oh, yeah. I would take it as an opportunity. But stick welding shouldn't be really any different. Um, nope. Nothing at all. Other than the fact your your electrode isn't gonna consume, but I, I would uh, I would practice my arc link between the base yeah. metal. Yeah. I would practice not long arcing, making sure my arc link is close to the base metal, not touching it, but a sixteenth away, and keeping that steadiness all the way up, consistency, for sure. That's good. Because that's a lot of people's problem. Let me Big old long piece of soapstone. You can draw your pattern on the. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah, that's right it. There. Let me let that's me ask you this. We uh, we've got this question coming up here uh, quite a bit. 
It's, uh, can you give me some small projects I can work on at home? I do have a power source, um, but, you know, scrap metal, you know, just keeping busy. What are you guys building at home right now? Just keeping busy. You could build a bookshelf or a shelf, you know what I mean, for your uh, grinders to hang on, little pegs, hang your grinding disc on, your wire wheel. Mm -hmm. um, you could build a little trash can for your shop if you don't have a metal trash can or a scrap bin to throw your scrap metal in. Uh, you can make a little burn table or something, like something small. Yeah, I mean, there's lots of, uh, just open your mind up or just open books up and look at old stuff like been built in schools and everything. I mean, that's the best. Just sit there and think a little bit and draw with a piece of soapstone and figure out what you want. Very good suggestions, man. Yeah. I got a, I got a long list of stuff I've been doing around here. Um, but I'll tell you what, I have found so many pieces of four five six inch long filler metal uh eighth and five thirty second or something now you can make a bunch of little bitty third hands they work well you can put a weight on them you can put a strong magnet on them you can put it on the base back away from the point and i found that they they'll sit there a little bit better and you can do some delicate stuff. I got into doing some horseshoe nails and stuff like that. And I kind of humiliated myself, but I did it on purpose because I wanted to break through this. Uh, I just wanted to kind of see if I could get my creative side to click a little bit. And I did. And, I, and it was, I mean, it was humiliating at first, but I don't know how many of you pushed nails and tried to keep them absolutely symmetrical. And I was using silicon bronze. Uh, I had another guy that kind of chimed in on one of his projects and he showed me some nails that he put together and I mean there wasn't a flaw and then he told me what machine he did it with 1957 Lincoln uh, ideal arc something touch start wow Come on, man stop <laughs> it uh, but I was I was hacked off at that point because I mean it's a, you know but that kind of stuff sells uh, it's artwork uh, wall hangers, you can take care of your neighbors repairing stuff. Uh, there's all kinds of little stuff you can put together, but if your art, artsy fartsy side clicks a little bit, you can put together shapes, cubes, uh, you name it. Uh, and there's also, uh, there's nothing that says that you have to, it has to be a weld. It can be a, a silicon bronze or aluminum bronze or something for color. You can, I mean, oxyacetylene. There's some cool stuff to do, really. And if you need some help, uh, holla. I got a long list of projects in here. Scrap metal, I'm it? telling you. The filler wire, it, it hacks me off when somebody uh, wastes filler wire. But now I'm like, I'm making money off. No, I'm kidding. But you, you find some <laughs> real good stuff in six-inch links. I mean, you can make some useful stuff. What about you, you can even tack mind? your pieces. Of oh, sorry. Go ahead. You been building anything what at happened? home? Uh, no, not necessarily, man. I've just been relaxing, <laughs> to be honest with you. But uh, if I'm going to build anything at all, it'll probably be something that's organized my garage. Something to hang up, something like, uh, you know, whether it be my broom or whatever the case may be. Uh, maybe a little mini table, mini barbecue pit, mini, uh, you know, stair set or whatever the case may be. You know, with me, I'm, a, I'm not a huge, huge, huge project guy. I mean... Most of what I do is just welding pipe, whatever I got to do in the construction industry. But when it comes to projects, projects, I know people that can just outran me with projects. So, but any projects that I can do is probably building tables, racks, um, little platforms, uh, stool steps, or whatever the case may be. That's probably what I would suggest if that's suitable for you at the moment. <laughs> All right, I got one from Steve, and it is. Is it possible to practice stitch patterns with pencil and paper? Bob, I know you've kind of uh, touched on this in the yeah, past, so if you want to kick that one off. The the stick welding process with pencil and paper? Stitch, stitch patterns. I'm sorry, what? He's saying, is it possible to practice stitch patterns? Like stitch a, patterns like your, with your, what process? Yeah, with sure it is. Paper. You're the, saying my, like different weaves? It, and, yeah. Uh, but I like, yeah, I like that idea because it's like the repeatable thing. I mean, cameraman, you got in trouble enough in, in school that you had to sit there and write the same sentence 50 times, you know, before they'd let you go out to the, you know, 
uh, you have to, it's like penmanship. You practice your penmanship. Uh, the staying between two guy, uh, two lines on a on a notepad, uh, staying on top of one, or drawing a circular pattern, or a U pattern, or a Z pattern, or something. Now you get good at repeating that. Uh, if you if you're doing that with a TIG process, I was always dead set against the. It's a good idea, but I was just dead set against. The, somebody put the pencil or the pen in the TIG torch and yeah. was physically mm. touching all the time i'm already good enough at stabbing the tungsten in the pond i don't need to if i practice that i'd be that's all i do seriously i'd yeah. be way, way too close in there all the time that'd be muscle memory that i wouldn't enjoy but yeah absolutely that'd be beneficial uh two pencils drawing patterns and you know while we're talking about patterns really there's only three or four that'll get you by in all of your welding and all processes. They don't need to be complicated. You crack open the old textbook and somebody wrote this, the, the small rectangle and then you go to a big one and all that. I get lost in that pattern. And I can tell you, you go through all these fancy motions and patterns and you look at your weld and you can't tell the difference of what, what pattern made what weld. It doesn't matter. It all looks the same. Just keep it simple, you know? Yeah. Yep. Travel speed, travel speed, and arc length will get you by more in life, you know. Yeah, I think it's my opinion same. anyway. All right, I got another one here for you. This is more of a comment, but if you guys want to uh, extrapolate on this, it says, "I made a cardboard TIG torch for walking the cup, and the cup is made of PVC pipe." So if you guys don't have a TIG torch uh, and you can't get one delivered to you, what do you guys think? What's a good way that they can uh, mock up a TIG torch? Well, that sounds like a good one. PVC pipe and maybe a rod, epoxy, something, old uh, cup, cork. You can use like a, maybe a broomstick, like cut the end of the broomstick off and just like walk the end of the broomstick like you're a cup, yeah. like a cup. Yeah, that too. Yeah. Uh, that too. yeah, I mean like a wooden one or a metal one, just chop the end of it off, square it up, and just like sit there and walk the cup. I mean, it's not a take torch, but it's walking the cup with something you have in your hand. All you need is something that's round, to be honest. I mean, something that's yeah. round, that's about, a, you know, maybe about a half inch to maybe an inch wide or long, whatever the case may be, and just walk it, man. It's the momentum that, that matters. That's all that matters, that momentum. Yeah. <laughs> all right, we got a question. Um, what are you doing to keep in touch with your students? I don't know if you want to tackle that one. Bob. Well, since I'm the only one that really has students formally. <laughs> I think that one was directed uh, <laughs> at you. <laughs> yeah. Y'all don't jump on that one at the same time. I, oh, we won't. We, we'll have, let you go. we have platforms that we have been using here at the college for a long, long time. It sounds like I'm going to advertise for them, and I am, I guess, but we use, a, we use Blackboard, uh, email, Zoom, text, anything available. The hard part for me is we have a system now, their their phone numbers are kind of, I mean, I can find them, but I don't, most of them I have already just by association of doing project stuff out here. And I mean, they're, they're good folks, but uh, social media platforms, it's pretty easy to get a hold of you, get a hold of you peeps. A lot of instructors will set up their class as a group in Facebook or Instagram or something like that. And they just, you know, if they have a hard time getting a hold of them. Uh, but again, we go through the, we go through the platforms here at the college, which is Zoom, Blackboard, Zoom conferencing app or whatnot. Uh, Blackboard is our formal uh, method of, of an online presence, so. Okay, let me, let me ask you this. We've got someone here asking, um, are there any books that you can recommend uh, to keep brushed up all, and welding. All I know, of them. I know uh, we're a little, you know, partial to YouTube videos here, but are there any books that you guys can recommend on welding? Sure. All of them. Yeah, just, yeah, bring it. I had a, I had one of our fans from across the pond, Mr. Hugh Frotter. I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. If not, he can slap me later sometime. The guy took a picture of some old-time books. Old-time and uh metals and how to weld them and some of them i mean they were they were back there dated way and i it kind of 
caught me off guard. And I'm going, I know I've got some of those. Some of those were handed down by my dad. Some of them I started out with. And some of mine were copyrighted in 1952. And there's some cool information in there. It's fun to go look through some of that stuff. Any of the modern stuff that, that textbooks are expensive. And I, I've had kind of a problem with some of the costs as far as, you know, students and the books that they buy for certain classes. But there's so much information online. I mean, everybody lives there. I mean, they're, they're in the classroom with their phone. That's a mistake when you're in my classroom. You don't want to pull your phone out. But man, Absolutely. you can use that thing as a miniature computer if you use it right. You know, and there's so much stuff that you can look up the technical specs on flux core wires, the, yeah. the anything like that, the process, yeah, the polarities, mm -hmm. just consumables. I mean, there is some cool stuff. And then it's pretty much all tied together in the wonderful world of welding by social media on Facebook and Instagram. And there's people that are willing to help. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a ton of material out there. There's some good titles. Uh, some of them are available for free. I've always been a reader myself, uh, and I do not have a problem gobbling up a textbook and digesting it. Uh, procedure handbook, my very first procedure handbook was the Black Lincoln one. I think it was copyright 1968 or something. And then uh, when I joined AWS, I got another one, and it's brown covered. The other book that I highly recommend is Jefferson's Welding Encyclopedia. That's a good book. I'll guarantee you that's a good book. Uh, a good reference material right there. Mm -hmm. The other thing I would suggest is if you suck at math and you hate math and hate fractions, now's your time to cuddle up with your tape measure and get real. Come on, people. Yeah. This stuff isn't that hard. Yeah. I mean, these fractions and yeah. decimals. And, uh, I've said it a gazillion times. You come in class, you need to know every sixteenth in the inch, so you know for placement. Mm -hmm. We can ask man cub right now. What's the decimal equivalency of thirteen sixteenths? Here you go. See, that's what I don't I'm know. Talking but about if you want to go by I know. divided by sixteen, that will give you your fraction. Though. Well, I know, but I don't. We don't have time for that. We just want full tape measure and go to point eight one two five. I mean, eight one seven five. Anyway, it's the placement. But that, you know, these oh, are the no, times. This is oh, the no. stuff that you need to do. Stuff you need to do. Point six eight seven five. Point seven five. Point eight one. Go ahead. Right. 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 No. No. Uh, this is the time to practice stuff on the stuff that you're lacking. You know, and if it's a uh, if it's tape measure and math and looking at some geometry, look into doing some layout. You know, there's some cool stuff. If you think you're going to do a project at home and build a grill, it better be nice looking grill. You want to do straight square and exact with the world so it'll cook good right got to be vented tight do some layout practice your layout there's all kinds of books on that too okay i, I found them you know i don't want to read them sometimes but i got a i got a question here for you it's a little off topic but i know it's probably gonna get you all uh pretty excited so this <laughs> is from intn14 he says my mom doesn't want me to go to trade school. Will I only start out making 20 to 30K if I'm a welder? I'll, I'll answer that one. Hey, I'll go ahead and answer that one for sure. 30K. So, uh, yeah, yeah. So, so it's just a pin on your hand, man, to be honest. Um, everybody's hand is different. And if your hand is 30 to $40 an hour hand, then that's what you're worth. See, with my students that I used to have, I would tell them honestly straight. If when they graduate, I'm going to tell them, look, you're worth right now about 15 to $18 an hour right now. That is what your hand is worth. And I'm just being real. I don't want to boast up their confidence and be like, hey, look, I got my combo welder certification. I'm ready to go making big $100,000 a year. It doesn't happen like that. I'm sorry. It does not happen like that. Now, there's a lot of people that are born with it. There's a lot of people that are born with that $40, $50 an hour hand. And I tell them straight, I'm like, hey, look, man, you got a gift. And you're, and you're definitely worth that even more. So it's just depending on your hand and how fast you learn. But the average is around thirty dollars to $40,000 a year. I mean, just for somebody that's just coming out of school, that has their combo order surge or whatever the case may be, just an average person. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's on my take, especially here in Texas. Does anybody else want to touch on that one? 
I don't know where that number came from. That's obviously maybe tied to a geographical area per se. I don't, I don't know. Maybe that's all they have available. And so my answer to that is, uh, are you just going to stay there? You're, I mean, go look around. There's, you, you might have to move. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess my impression is I, I've seen a lot of students uh, come in here and they, they think their job's going to be right across the street and they can show up three times a week or something. I don't know, but you got to get out and move. You got to go, got to, you might have to go two counties away, one state away. You might have to go five, 600 miles mm-hmm. away. Do it. Yeah. yeah. It's a yeah, learning experience. Go, the, you, you pay your dues, you establish your work record. You have something to negotiate, uh, parlay that relationship into some higher pay. I mean, you're not going to be at, you're not going to be at the low wages forever. Go, go turn and burn, you know? Mm-hmm. And eventually you will earn. All right, guys. Well, I think that's uh, that's all the questions here. We're getting on the side. So, uh, is there anything else you guys want to want to close out? Yeah, with? I want to give uh, I want to give a shout out to these uh, these blokes across the pond that came uh, last Fab Tech. There, Chris Noble and, and uh, Johnny the Welder, Johnny Burke, and all those guys that came over. Uh, you know, hey, we support. Uh, I mean, I'm curious to what goes on, what's going on in Europe. Uh, I've looked at these interactive maps with this virus. Uh, my best friend's a, a physician, and I've got some intel, and I'm, I'm kind of curious to what's going on across the pond there. But, uh, again, I have always supported their efforts, and I've been super curious, and we appreciate the fan base. You guys rock. Uh, you know, that Snowmageddon thing that happened at Fabtech, I, I really wanted to meet a bunch of you, but... Uh, a couple of you said you'd be watching live tonight, and I wanted to give you a special shout out because I think that's just that's just great stuff. I appreciate you guys. Kamar, Mike, any closing words? Yeah, I appreciate you guys watching Well.com. I mean, joining us here at 5:30. There was a lot of good questions out there. I mean, I'm glad we're here to help. I mean, we're a big family. We, we basically want to share our knowledge and. And share the knowledge you guys have because everyone's going to have their own thing to learn. So, yeah, I appreciate you guys being here with us. And, yeah, I mean, I hope everyone stays healthy, and that's it. Hamar, congratulations on that baby boy. He's a he's a chunk. Oh, man. yeah. I, I appreciate that. Congrats. I got to get five, some, five gotta months get some now today. Five months today, man. Five months that's today. Good. He's, he's right. a blessing, uh, man, for sure. That's awesome. But, uh, yeah. but I do want to say – uh, oh. Yeah, camera guy. Thanks for uh, thanks for putting this on. You always you always stay hidden, like Mr. Wilson. We're gonna get you out sometime. I don't even know who he looks like. <laughs> hey, I was I was in the thumbnail, but uh, I was able to get rid of that. So. <laughs> oh man. Uh, he actually, yeah, yeah he actually does well hard work. Jason was around. He actually showed his face when Jason was around. So yeah, we'll get him back out. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thanks right, uh, for watching. Uh, Bob, Mike, Hamar, thanks for being here. Appreciate you. We'll be back on yep. Monday. Thanks a lot, All folks. All right. All right. Thank you. God bless. Good night.